It's a crazy week. What do your investors care about? What do your clients say? They really, they really care about first what's going to happen with the Fed, mm -hmm. and and it's more just to take the uncertainty about if or how much out of their decision-making process. You guys recently had a survey that talked about how much of your clients' assets were in cash. Can you talk us through what you noticed and sort of then what that tells you about their mindset? Sure, absolutely. So what you see are very high uh, cash levels around the globe. It's about 26% of high net worth investors' assets are in cash around the globe, 22% uh, here in the United States. And, and those cash levels are more consistent with what you would see in a volatile, challenging environment, somewhat similar mm -hmm. to the financial crisis. And so you've really had uh, that old adage of a bull market climbing a wall of worry, significant amount of cash, people waiting for a pullback, but not getting the pullback that they're looking for. So if we continue to see easy central bank policy and the Fed sort of in some ways the global central bank rather than just the U.S. central bank, um, we, we won't get that pullback. So are they going to allocate soon? Are they, are they going to just stick to it and wait? Like, what do, what do you think? So this is exactly why um, we've, we've advised investors to be overweight equities, in particular U.S. equities. Uh, with, uh, with the one central bank that was in tightening mode, flipping now to a more dovish stance, clearly that's more positive for, for risk assets. And although cash may appear to be, the safest choice. It's actually diversification and exposure to uh, to equities that'll that'll bear out. So, how much risk are you advising individuals to take on if we see the world of sort of a negative zero yields continuing? Yeah, so, so we're we're in an environment where if you look at cash, what central banks are telling you, whatever you thought it was worth, you're going to get paid less on it going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, clearly, the the alternatives are primarily in the in the equity markets. Uh, and do you need to keep diversification into the bond market also, like as in a just-in-case kind we, of thing? We do have, we do have uh, a slight overweight to longer-term treasuries as the, mm. as the just-in-case uh, bit of portfolio insurance. But um, clearly what you've seen is, is that uh, investors are getting rewarded uh, for, uh, for taking advantage of what is really some good underlying optimism about the economy. Right, which is so ironic because in your survey, about 41% uh, were optimistic about the global economy, which was up in the first quarter, yet you have a lot of allocation then to cash, and then you have central banks that are going to be easy. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There, there, there certainly are a lot of conflicts in terms mm -hmm. of what, uh, what investors are saying and what they're actually doing. Uh, but, the, but a way to, to really rationalize all that is to say they're optimistic about the underlying tone. They're waiting for that opportunity to buy it, but there's a lot of cash, and that's what keeps this underlying mm -hmm. bid behind the market. The other interesting thing that showed up in our survey, which I think is, is critically important to job growth, business owner optimism has been strong since uh, November of 2016, and it actually reached its highest point uh, in this past survey. Mm -hmm. And is that why you want to be overweight, say, the U.S. versus, say, the value of Europe or something that, or Latin America? That's one of, that's one of the reasons. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, if you think about business owner growth, so small and medium enterprises uh, are responsible for 65% of the job growth in the economy. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their plans to either invest uh, in their companies or to increase hiring in their companies, they're the strongest numbers that we've seen in, in two and a half years.